All right, so welcome back. Um, second part, what I'm doing now, last video we went through making a character. Now we're going to go through making an NPC. Making a character is mostly just adding in features from compendiums, but sometimes making an NPC, you might need to add your own attacks in and things like that. So still in Foundry, still in our Actors tab, I want to make a new actor from scratch, a new NPC. So I'm going to go Create Actor. This time I'm changing it from character to NPC and I'm putting my NPC name in. I'm going with good old Mecha Blinsky. Click Create Actor. We get a slightly different version of the sheet we had before. Fewer features because, again, we don't, although we have things like biography, we don't need a page for their traits, their beliefs, um, things like that. Same as before, I'm going to pull the art in. So if I double click, I'm going to select my art and it will bring through the art for my character. That's not a very good one. Let's go with that one instead. There we go. Um, you don't have much control at this time over the scaling of portrait images, so you might find that you need to do a little bit of tweaking. So I'm going to go through and put in the very reasonable stats of this, um, this particular NPC. Go through. You can select and type over stats in Foundry, or you can just click in and then use the mouse wheel. Oops, I went a bit too low with that one. There we go. That's better. Intelligence, well, he's obviously extraordinarily intelligent to create such devices. He's obviously very wise because he knows when is a good time to use them and when is to stay hidden. And I mean, charisma, how, how high can we even go? Um, no number would be high enough to reflect the charisma. Let's just stop at 100. And I can do the same for all of this. So I can go through and, you know, his expertise with that strength score gives him a solid 18. I don't know what the charisma one would be with expertise. A plus 15, a plus 49. Um, you see what I mean? You can go through and add all of that in. You can add in your legendary actions. Uh, what I quite like about that is it will refresh um, as they're used as well, which is handy for you as the DM to keep track of. I'm going to give him his legendary resistances. Um, he's not going to have any lair actions. His size, gargantuan. Updates automatically in there. His health. His armor class. Speed. I can go through and add in things like his senses if I want to type those in. The languages that he speaks. Any damage immunities. One thing that. Um, Oh no, that's been updated actually, so never mind. Yeah, add our immunities, add our resistances, vulnerabilities, any condition immunities. And then what I like in here compared to programs I've used before is that I've got a lot of options to automatically add things in, like the effects of different builds, savage attacks, um, various feats that can be applied automatically that in previous software I was using, you had to remember that separately. Or even though if you, you might have had it added in on the features sheet, it had no automatic mechanical effect. That does happen in here automatically. That's a huge time saver for me. You can also give various bonuses. For example, Strahd in my game has some bonuses in here um, automatically all the time. And as certain, you know, as the feigns perhaps are restored, I can come in and remove them from in here. So yeah, I've got in the basics of him in there. Then Features. So I've got his actions, his attacks, his features, and his inventory. So I'm just going to make some make some up here automatically. Um, if I go into features, I'm going to give him. Oh, I don't know. Let's just make something up as we're going. I'm going to say that when when Piccolo is conscious, he serves as co-pilot, meaning that. Blinsky gets an extra attack and an extra reaction if Piccolo is still in the fight. So we're going to call that um, Color Pilot. I can give that an icon as well. There is quite a large set of icons that come with um, this automatic, that come with Foundry automatically. 
The icons are based on the rule sets you add in. Now, although I've got no interest in, in Pathfinder, I find that it's worth installing Pathfinder just because you get far more tokens, um, sorry, not tokens, icons, than you do with the 5e rule set. There's a lot of overlap between the two, like spells and feats, but for some reason, in things like items, you get far more in, um, in the Pathfinder rule set. Um, when you're on these image searches, you can change between list views, small icons, grids, and then the full image view. I prefer the full image view for tokens. If I'm trying to find a detailed token for something, most of the time I will go with this one. So I'm going to go in here and find something. I spend far too much time trying to find tokens that I like. You could very easily never use tokens. Your players aren't going to see this, so you might be happy having them all as the default icon. I am quite sad, so I, I don't like that. So let's go down. Um, I know there's only two of them, but that seems more than one person. I'm going to use that as the icon for Copilot. I'm going to go in here and then just... It's really good at picking up links. So if you use World Anvil, for example, and you have your World Anvil world um, linked to this, as it pulls through, we can click on the links and go straight to the pages of your document. Or if you copy from maybe you have know, a Roll20 website or any website, links will pull through in here. Remember, you're going to run this through a program as a DM, but your players will be running it through a web browser. So it's very handy at pulling things through like that. And they always go through to, um, it always opens in a new tab. So you're not going to find that players are taken away and out of your session from clicking a link. Um, you can also put images in here. Um, both raw images or embedded to journal entries, and you can drag different articles into each other. So if I already had um, a NPC for Piccolo, I could type out whilst, now I'm going to type Piccolo, but if I had a Piccolo NPC, I could drag it in here and it will add a link. If I test it with Chad Cleric, you'll see it starts off looking like that, but once I've saved it, if I go back in, You'll see it now pulls through a live link that when I click on it, goes to that NPC. So I find that quite useful for linking things together for enemies that interact with each other. Whilst Piccolo is conscious, now because this is a feature, there isn't really any trigger to it so i don't need to do anything in these other tabs um, better roles and effects are both from modules that i'll talk about in the future um, you may have seen my post from the other day about effects how i've used that to set things like the key and the healing pool for my monk that's something that i can talk about at length later better roles is just about refining and configuring the information that's displayed in the chat box when abilities are used so I'm leaving this one as is. I'm going to add an, uh, an attack. No, an action. So if I click on action, I'm going to call this rocket punch. I'm going to pick an icon for that as well. I'm just going to put a fist on this one. Not going to do anything fancy. So description. Whoa. Full name, full name. Mecha Blinsky fires his Okay, so that's just a little fluff flavour description for you. And that is something that unless you configure Foundry not to, that would appear in the chat box. So like I've mentioned in the um primer documents that I've shared, be mindful of what you put in here. If you have an enemy that perhaps was an NPC that your group don't yet know is a vampire, and in their unarmed attack, you say, well, they might, they can choose to not do damage, and then they can follow up with a bite attack. Well, if your players see that in the chat log when they first throw a punch and you roll an unarmed attack, that can kind of spoil things for your players. You think, well, hold on, this person wants to bite us, or either a cannibal. Or they're a vampire. Let's change our strategy. 
just kind of ruins that immersion a bit when the flavor ruins the, um, you know, the combat. So I want to set this as an attack. If I go into details, we can decide, well, what sort of activation cost does this have? This uses one, and you see what we've got in here. This is going to use one action. You can specify an activation condition if you want, like that bite attack I mentioned earlier. That normally has a requirement that the target is grappled. You can type that in here as a reminder for you. Now I'm going to say this is a rocket punch, so you can fire it off. He's a gargantuan sized creature. We've all seen anime and how far things can get fired. I am going to suggest that this can hit a 100 feet away enemy. Template texture I'll come back to later. Uh, well, in a different video. Template texture comes from a module that you can add. Um, that allows you to pick an image which is associated with the use of this ability. Now, you can have GIFs and WebMs and MP4s. So what that means is animated spell effects. I can have fireball spell. I can say use the token for fireball. And when it gets cast, I choose where to drop that big GIF and that animated token appears. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I've shelled out a fair bit of money buying Roll20 um, spell packs for it, but I'll cover that in another video. I'm going to say this has 100 foot normal range, 300 feet max. Duration? Um, it's not duration, it just happens. Limited uses? Um, I'm going to say there's no limited use, but I'm going to say this is a recharge attack. Um, so I'm going to say this recharge is on a five. For flavor, once, you know, maybe the fist retracts back as if it's magnetized or if it's on a cord, but maybe it takes a bit of time for it all the gears to line back up. But it starts combat charged. Feature attack. So what sort of attack is this? We are going to say it is a ranged weapon attack. This expands the menu and gives us more information to put in. So what ability modifier does it use? Does it use his default? Now we're gonna go with, it uses his strength. Is there an attack roll bonus? So this is a bonus to hit. One thing that unless I've misunderstood how I'm using Foundry so far, when you have something like a magical weapon that's plus one, you have to record that plus one in both the hit and in the damage separately. I don't know if that'll change in the future or if it's something I've misunderstood, not a huge deal. So I'm gonna say, his rocket punch strikes with all the magical ferocity of a plus five weapon. It's a weapon the likes of which Barovia has never seen. Um, so I'm going to go in and say it's got a plus five. What is the damage we're going to add on? So I'll go damage. The damage formula, well, I think it's quite reasonable to say that this is 2d20 plus the five from our. Um, weapon bludgeoning damage you've got options in here for what's the calculation for its versatile any other formula um so if i have something that i, be I believe i can't remember if it's raw or if it's in dragner's stat block um strad's unarmed attacks are slashing but automatically come with an amount of necrotic damage as well so i'm going to put in here this also comes with 1d20 um, no, I'm going to leave that actually, change my mind, I'm going to cover that in another video. Sorry for the back and forth, and I'm not refined, I'm not editing these videos, I'm just putting out my train of thought for you. And there's no save and throw involved in this, so that is just a weapon effect I'm setting up. So we now have Rocket Punch. I'm going to go and choose a token for Blinsky. Let's see if that worked better than last time. It did, and we now have a token for him. And compared to Chad Cleric from the last video, you'll see that it's already calculated his size and has resized the token accordingly. Other things we can do in here. In the spell book, unlike the player um, sheet, which goes off class levels, we can define in here what level spellcaster they are, and that will automatically add in the slots and the spell levels so similar to our previous video, we can then go into a compendium of spells. 
and start dragging out the spells that we want them to have. Obviously, Mecha Blinsky would know every single book uh, and every single spell that an Archmage has access to, so I'm not going to do that. It would take too long. And I can then go into the biography if I wanted to and just write some notes in there for me as the DM to refer back to. Um, I can put in here his alignment. I'll leave what he is up to you. Type, construct, source, Dragon's Dreams. Uh, and his CR rating, well, leave that up to you. Um, so that's the basics of creating an NPC sheet. I'll go through how we can use both of these together on a map in the next video. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and catch you next time.